Thanks for coming back. In this video, we'll be discussing live-in caregiver eligibility. How can you, as a live-in caregiver, qualify for either a work permit or permit residence? So specifically in this video, we'll just discuss primarily the work permit side. There are subsequent videos done where we will discuss the permit residence angle of it a little bit more in detail. But as a, a foreign worker who wants to come in as a live-in caregiver, obviously the first thing is we need to have a employer that's willing to provide that employment letter. So there are five key requirements to start that application and to ensure that you qualify for a live-in caregiver application. The first is obviously to ensure that you have an employer that's willing to do what's called a labor market impact assessment. And this is issued by Employment and Social Development Canada, also known as ESDC. And essentially what this LMIA is, um, like all the other LMIAs out there, is making an application to Service Canada and essentially arguing that the position that you're trying to fill, the live-in caregiver position, is not readily available in Canada. And how it's done, and again, there's a video specifically dedicated to LMIAs and how to make a strong application, but in essence, it's, it's about demonstrating to Service Canada that that position you tried to fill, you weren't able to. And how we do that is by doing various recruitment efforts. So the more advertising and recruitment efforts you make, the higher the chances of success. Okay. Um, the second requirement here is a written employment contract. Now, the employment contract is very unique when it comes to the living caregiver. It discusses some specifics, is, includes the wage, the hours that you need to work, the job duties performed, where you will be staying. So the details of this employment uh, contract is also located on our website. You can definitely look at it um, and it's very specific. Um, the third requirement, which is very important, is a new requirement. Um, we have to demonstrate that the applicant, so the live-in caregiver, has successfully completed a secondary school education. So this is compulsory. Uh, by secondary school, I mean high school. And what the officer will do is assess the school in the foreign country and equate it to the secondary school system that we have in Canada and make sure that it is compliant and it is up to Canada standards. So in there, you want to include your high school diploma, for example, maybe your transcripts of classes you took, anything that in relation to the education that you have completed. The fourth requirement, which is also a relatively new requirement, it's also compulsory, and I'll read it to you. It's at least six months of training, and by training I mean full-time classroom training in that relevant field, so such as childhood education or caring for the elderly. Or instead of the actual training, you may also use your work experience, so it could be um, six months of classroom training or hands-on training. Now, if it's going to be uh, hands-on training, it should be one year of full-time work experience, where six continuous months uh, must have been with one employer and, and so forth. So I'll just repeat, it's either six months of in-class training or it's one year full-time employment where one of that one year, six months is with one employer. So can't be one month with a one employer, two months with another, three months with another, and so forth. So that's key to requirement number four. And the last is you do have to demonstrate as a living caregiver that you are able to communicate in English or French. So speaking, reading, and comprehending the, the, the two languages, one of two languages, whether it's English or French, is mandatory. So we do recommend that if you can provide, provide a IELTS exam uh, results so that it demonstrate that you do uh, understand and speak English. Uh, or something of that nature to demonstrate. So maybe you took classes in English 
um, or maybe English is a um, primary language in your home country. So you want to include documentation and proof that you are able to speak in either English or French. So just to summarize, the first is obviously to ensure you have an employer that's willing to do a labor market impact assessment. Then drafting that employment contract is essential to the success of the application. So ensuring that this contract is drafted according to Service Canada standards. There also is a secondary school um, education that is compulsory as well as at least six months of training in class or one year of full-time work in the industry where six months of that work is with one employer and the other six months can be with several employers, just to clarify that. And the fifth requirement is that you have proficiency in English and or French. I hope that clarified everything and how you can qualify under the Live-In Caregiver Program. If you have any further questions, by all means, give us a call. Thanks and until next time. Oh,